XR over 5G would mean freedom. I think it's really cool experience, yeah. right? <laughs> The fundamental thing that the mixed reality and virtual reality technologies are great at is empathy. Yeah, I, the mind boggles at what's possible. When was the last time you thought about that moment when you experienced something and realized this is going to change everything? I'll give you an example. First time I used Google Earth. Wow! Instant teleportation anywhere and everywhere on the planet. But it was still an experience using a screen. Imagine a future where you could teleport yourself in a world where the digital realm is merged with the physical. Imagine a future where your virtual experience is as real as reality itself. XR over 5G is a project with the aim of changing how we experience virtual realities. Ericsson provides 5G connectivity and collaborates in this project with Vario that provides headsets and a cloud-based streaming platform and one reality that supports the project with XR experiences. Well, the, the reason we were so excited to take part in this project uh, was that we would get a chance to evaluate the quality of uh, an XR experience over 5G. This demo is one of the interesting demos when it comes to extended reality or XR. It's to demonstrate that with current technologies we can actually do this over the 5G system. One of the fundamentals is enabling uh, small lightweight devices that are easy to carry but still having the infinite compute of the cloud at your disposal so you get high quality experience no matter where you are on lightweight devices. XR or extended reality is the next step in the evolution of virtual realities where we've gone from virtual reality to augmented reality and to mixed reality. XR includes all of this, but it's also an umbrella term for basically all physical and virtual combined experiences. To access these worlds always call for some form of device like this VR headset. And that limits us either in compute or in mobility. If we need mobility, we have to sacrifice compute and vice versa. And that's where we are today. But you know what? 5G is an excellent platform to solve this problem. What 5G offers is, of course, in general, uh, more capacity, so you can send more information back and forth, and also lower latencies. The brain uh, is quite sensitive to delays or latency. We don't want the motion sickness. We don't want hand gestures to be delayed or if you move your head, you want it to be exact. If we can achieve that, we can achieve the quality experience that we are after. And we can achieve it without having that big, expensive computer there at the spot. We have two challenges. First of all, human eye resolution means roughly two 12K streams, streamed at 90 frames per second, which is three times faster than typical videos are streamed. And the display resolutions that we need to push are equivalent to tens of 4K streams simultaneously. So this is the kind of thing which is technically already difficult. And when you combine it with the low latency needs that the mixed reality and virtual reality absolutely demand, that makes it double more difficult to achieve. To put the latency and bandwidth requirements to the test, the team constructed a demo where a mixed reality experience is streamed over 5G. What we're seeing here is mixed reality, experienced through various headsets, the XR3. That's connected today to a laptop, as our headsets are not today yet fully wireless. But that laptop is then connected directly through 5G to Ericsson's backbone network. But what we sort of understand now is that if you sort of you know, can cut this cable, then you also offer mobility into this scenario as well. And that's sort of going to be a big step. And if you can make this work over a cellular network, then you have this ubiquitous connectivity. Uh, but I guess there's also sort of a, another sort of benefit to this. Uh, and that's if you separate the computer, then you have the computer somewhere else, then you could have a more powerful computer. When you look at what we enable here as well is almost infinite compute to the headset. And it means that we can reach much faster to the place where you can fully simulate virtual objects that look exactly as they would be real physical objects in your world. Making virtual objects come across as real also requires abilities like occlusion, meaning that virtual objects can be obscured by objects in the physical world. 
Testing this out in the demo also gives a glimpse of the future possibilities and requirements for the XR technology. It's a very interesting challenge overall when you need to not only have like uh, mix these signals, but you need to actually have almost the 3D understanding of everything around you. And I could say that uh, there is roughly equal amount of, of data that needs to be going from the headset to the cloud. So you have more information that you need to start transferring back and forth. So more information, so you need more computing power, so you need a bigger computer, which you don't want to carry with you, and that you put somewhere on the, on, you know, on the network. Uh, and then you need to get information to that computer and back from the computer, but really, really quick, because you need to be realistic as well. The demo also makes use of another feature made possible by 5G. You can now have a different sort of architecture in how you build these systems. So you could potentially have the compute at different points in the network as well. So you have some things that could be you know, computed in the goggles themselves, some things could be computed on an edge cloud near the base station, and some things could be computed even further up on the, you know, on the internet, in the public cloud. And when you do this, if you go higher up the cloud, then you could potentially also um, have multiple users share the same access to the, this public cloud. And so these two goggles, they may get information from the same server, and so they both see the same thing, but they may not be in the same place. So they could potentially be, you know, different parts of the world, but they experience the same sort of virtual world together. And in the demo, we're taking the first steps towards realizing this future of shared experiences. What is required for this is a shared digital representation of the environment, meaning that you have a digital replica of the room, so you can actually place objects into that room digitally remote. Both of the headsets or users then are connecting to the same digital representation, feeding up their sensory information of location and headset position, and then gets back two video streams in sync from the server. And um, yeah, it's really cool when you experience it firsthand. So what will all this look like in 2030? Well, moving the intelligence to the cloud will most certainly enable devices to be more practical and neater. Perhaps this will be more of an accurate size. Or imagine if it's only lenses. Regardless of where we'll be in 10 years, we can already today see examples of how XR technology is being applied in different industries. In the construction industry today, we use uh, XR for training, but also for augmented reality and visualization of projects. When it comes to safety, we have had many colleagues uh, that have taken an XR training course, and we have seen a strong impact when it comes to XR learning. And very short time after the, the, the training, we have measured that uh, the behavior have improved a lot. Medical physiology is actually the science of life, you can say. And it's sometimes difficult to understand the physiological processes because they are dynamic. And if you just illustrate it with pictures or drawings in books, it might be difficult to understand. But if you can illustrate the dynamic processes by following a process, it would be much more easy to understand. I think XR for education is a very, it's a very important aspect, actually. If you really think about it, education today is not always for all people. We believe that uh, quality visualizations, quality experiences drive democratization of education. One thing that these sort of last two years have shown us is that, you know, this communication is really what helped people survive over these very tough years that we've had recently. Apart from just, you know, making a phone call and being in touch with someone, this now enables people to sort of, you know, be in the same virtual room together and be in touch with other people. The fundamental thing that the mixed reality and virtual reality technologies are great at is empathy. Ability to, like, uh, sense the sensations and relive the emotions of the people. Of course, we are already living in a digitally extended reality. The smartphone is an excellent example, but the user interface forces us to choose whether to be inside or not. XR could leap us forward, avoiding a shift of focus, but rather be integrated into everyday life. So if internet offered a democratization of information, XR could be offering a democratization of experiences. <laughs>